Here we are at the end of November 2021. We're between two eclipses. One was November 19th, next one is December 4th. And according to Bernadette Brady's book, The Eagle and the Lark, which has a lot of great information on eclipses, this is an eclipse of messages, of messages of love, a love of uh, an eclipse of possible happy events and love. And it's really proven to be an eclipse of love. Everyone who's reached out to me to talk to me over the last six weeks has been having um, big love things going on. Some people are finding love, other people are losing love, and a lot of people are both finding and losing love. And talking to these people, I've found myself saying the same things over and over and over again, but never having the time to give the whole picture of what I really need to talk about and what about what I think we really need to know. So I decided I would just make one long course on this topic of love. From the point of view of not as an abstract concept and not even as a human concept, but from the point of view of getting more love in your life. Really we want love in our life is what we want. And the reality is when we really understand things it's actually possible to have love in everything we do. It's actually possible to live a life where every action, every experience you have is an experience of love. Now wouldn't that be nice, right? You know, you know most of the time we've spent almost every action, every experience seems to be an action experience of frustration or disappointment or depression. And this is not how it's meant to be. We're really here on a journey to discover what love is, and through that discovery to experience what love is. And not just with that significant other, which is just a little we part of your life, but in every part of your life, in the work you do, in every relationship with every person that comes across your path, there's actually an opportunity for love there. But we're not experiencing it, and that's the sad thing. So with this eclipse, some people are having to make choices with love between lovers. Other people have to make choices about love with a parent or a child or who knows what, or even where to live. Okay? Every commitment we make, every action we do, can be and really should be an action and commitment of love. Otherwise, why would we want to do it? Right? Why would we want to do any other action? Because we're really here to make and experience a life of love. So this course is about that. It's going to be a long course. It's going to all be on YouTube. It's not going to be on my video site like my other courses. I'm going to teach it all here on YouTube. And, you know, I hope this helps people make a lot of progress on this journey of finding what love is, creating love, having a life that's full of love on multiple levels, not just in your love life. I don't want you to have a good love life and be depressed when you go to work, okay? I don't want you to have a good love life and be depressed about where you live, okay? But really to experience love in all things, in everything you're doing. That's how, that's possible, okay? So, during this class I'm going to talk about the symbols of the planets. I have to do that because as an astrologer I see things through this lens of astrology. Um, you don't need to know astrology to follow along, but by adding that, people who are, you know, studying astrology and know astrology, it'll add another dimension of understanding to you, and it'll also help you gain a very important understanding of the astrological elements you're working with. So the tools you're using with astrology will take on a new dimension that you can use to help yourself and help your clients, okay? But you don't need to know any astrology to follow this course. So if your eyes gloss over when I say something astrological, fine. Enjoy the siesta. Get back online when I talk about something else. You won't miss anything important, okay? You'll still have all the information you need to bring love into your life. Okay, now, the main point to understand is we can have love in all areas of our life. Not just one, not just two, but every one. Now, there are three types of active love. The love of Venus, the love of Mars, and the love of Jupiter. All these planets are planets that are actively doing something, and that can be an action of love. It's supposed to be an action of love. We're often not using those as an action of love, but 
that's what they're for. So as part of this course, we're going to explain the different ways these planets love. So that whenever you have to do these things, you're doing it as an act of love instead of an act of something else. Okay? And that something else is always something painful. So the choice is always between an act of love or an act of pain, isn't it? Okay. Now, these types of love are founded on strengths within us, under, under capacities within us. Okay? And those are indicated by the Sun, Moon, and Mars. So, we basically have a relationship with ourselves indicated by those planets that creates a loving relationship with ourselves. So, are we having a loving relationship with ourselves? Yes. Then we can act in accordance with love through these red planets. If we're not having a loving relationship with ourselves, how can we act in accordance with love at these red planets? So these planets act with love, but not act with others, not interrelate with others. They act and interrelate with ourselves to create love in our lives when we're spending time with ourselves. So, they have nothing to do with having love with other people. They have to do with having the love with yourself, when you're, when you're with yourself, your own process, how you're treating yourself. Like Christ says, you know, love yourself first and then love your neighbor. That's what these planets are, need to get busy doing. Okay? So these planets work in pairs, and we'll talk about them later, each in pairs, so you can really understand the ways you can have love. Okay? Then there's a planet called Saturn, and Saturn has its own unique kind of love. It's a passive love. So we also have something called passive love. Love that's not in action. Love that has nothing to do with yourself either. Okay? So there's seven types of love available to us every moment. Those of us who study astrology knows that all the things are happening by the planets, right? We blame everything on those planets. And today I'm blaming all those planets on giving us something to love. Even Saturn gives us an opportunity for a loving moment. So no matter what planet is moving through your life, whether it's Mars, Jupiter, Venus, or Saturn, or any of the others, you're being given an opportunity for love. An opportunity that we don't recognize, an opportunity that we don't even know how to accept. So a lot of this course is about recognizing that opportunity and accepting that opportunity. And we have work to do to get there. Okay? So, there's even more great stuff about love. Not only is love available to us through all seven of our planets to which we're experiencing life consciously. And yes, there's those other planets, Rahu, K2, the south, north and south nodes of the moon, and Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We're not experiencing those consciously. Okay? And in this course, we're all about conscious love. Love you can experience consciously. Love you can choose consciously. That's the love that we can work with. Okay? So, the, this seven love of all these planets, the wonderful thing about it is it's available to us on three levels. It's available to us on a material level, on an emotional level, and a spiritual level. That means you have 21 opportunities for love in your life. Okay? Maybe we should play a game and see how many of them we're getting. <laughs> you know? But imagine that. You don't even have to play the game and count how many types of love you're getting in your life. Raise your hand, it was way the fuck less than 21, right? So wouldn't it be nice for it to be 21 times? Okay? And it's possible. It can be done. Now to do this, to have love in our life, we have to do some things. Okay? We have to define love. This is easy. It's easy to define something. Okay? Why do we have to define love? Because love is a dirty word. It's the dirtiest one in the book, okay? I'd rather have somebody tell, tell me the F word than the L word, you know what I mean? Love's a very dirty word. And what I mean by that is, love has so many connotations and so many meanings that how do we even know what a working definition is? Every person is having different relationship experiences because they have a def different definition of love. Think of that. Everyone's having a relationship experience that's different because our definition of love is different. 
So when you tell your friend why you're in love, they think you're crazy because their definition is more crazy or less crazy or different than yours, right? No one gets it because we're all running according to our own definitions. Sadly, these definitions are rarely workable definitions, which means they're not definitions that give a true experience of love. They're definitions that lead us to pain and agony and suffering and disappointment and suicide and impossibilities. So we have to clear up what this word even is. You know, the F word's the most famous word, right? Oh gosh, the connotations, the number of meanings the F word has. I remember one time I was on a hike with my family and I think my daughter was nine to 11. She was a young girl still. And we were hiking at the four mile point since we we're all barefoot hiking. She managed to hurt her foot. She stubbed her toe, something nasty. And she didn't want to walk anymore. So I said, all right, y'all. Head up, finish the hike. I'm going to throw Kiki, my daughter, on my back and hoist it up to my shoulders. I said, I'll walk her back to the car and you guys can probably finish the hike and catch up to us. As soon as we're out of sight, she asks me, she goes, what does the F word mean? I'm like, well, the F word means a lot of things. And she goes, what? And I said, well, it means this and it means this and it means that. I taught her all the different things the F word can mean. In all circumstances I can imagine. In this case, it means this. It could mean this, it could mean this, it could mean this. And then things would happen while we're hiking, like I would notice a low branch and she would almost get knocked off. And I would say, so this was, this is an example of using the F word this way. And after four miles, we got to the car and I pretty much had finished giving every um, meaning to the F word that I could think of. Because it's a very dirty word, because it has so many meanings. To me, a dirty word is a word that has lots of meanings that you how do you know what it even is, means, right? Well, thank God she didn't ask me what love meant. Because if she asked me what love meant, I think I'd still be walking here like eight years later, ten years later. Okay? Love is the dirtiest word in the book. Everyone has its own definition. And so the first thing we're going to do in this course is define a workable definition of love. Because if you're operating under an unworkable definition of love, you're going to get only one thing, and that is an unworkable relationship. Okay? So, we're going to clear that up, and when you clear that up, wow, you're finally looking through a lens, a clear lens, a lens that you can trust. Okay? We'll do that next in, in the next video. That's the easy part. We're just going to learn a new word. Okay? Then we have to do the hard parts. There's four hard parts. Isn't that life? One easy part, one part easy to four parts tough. Okay? But the fun, the tough parts are really the fun parts, you know? The first part we have to do, the first hard part, sorry, is that we have to acknowledge that we're fully responsible for the love that we have in our lives. Yes, you're fully responsible for the love you have in your life. Okay? It's really important to acknowledge that. Because you have two options in life. You can acknowledge that you're responsible for the love in your life and that your definition of love has not been a true definition and so you seeked that out and therefore got that which was not love because it wasn't a true definition. You need to acknowledge that you're 100% responsible. And then, by being 100% responsible, you have a 100% opportunity to choose working love. As long as we're in a state where we're not responsible for our choices in love, where we say, it's not my fault, this guy did it to me, this girl did it to me, life is jinxing me, I'm being taken advantage of, as long as we're making ourselves a victim of love, then we have no power to choose working love. And we want to choose working love, consciously. Our other option is to be a victim of love, and we all know what that feels like. Enough of that stuff, okay? So, we have to admit full responsibility. I'm going to have a whole video just about that. A lot of us, when we think of that, oh, how can I be responsible for this, this, and this? I mean, you might have had some atrocious experiences in love, and there is, it might seem unfathomable to accept responsibility for those experiences. So we're going to have a whole video on that. Okay, it's very important. Then the other super hard thing you have to do, this is really, really, really hard. You have to realize that you have the inherent right to be happy. 
Okay? It's obvious, right? You know? Isn't it a funny world we live in where our parents say, Oh, to find out what's, go do something that makes you happy. Go be happy. You know? You need to do what makes you happy in life. And then you go, look, mom, look what I'm doing. Look, dad, look what I'm doing. And they're like, oh, don't waste your time on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Talk about mixed messages when it comes to having a right to have happiness in this world. You know? So we have to have the right to be happy. This is such a simple thing that we seem to forget. In the Declaration of Independence in 1776, they actually wrote that we have we are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Isn't it crazy that that had to be written down somewhere? And it made me think, you think of that and you go, where, when I pick up a spiritual book, how often does it actually say I have the right to be happy? Not very often. Usually it says I have the right to meditate for a thousand years standing on my head. You know. So we have the right to pursue happiness. Wow, what an idea. What that means is we have the right to choose actions to discover happiness. Okay? We also have to have the wisdom to choose the actions that lead to happiness. And that's what this course is about. But we need to realize we have the right to be happy. A lot of us don't. If the people, those of us who've had the most difficult relationship experiences, are operating under some idea that we simply don't have the right to be happy. Okay? So we under, need to understand where that idea comes from, why it's a hard idea to shed, and finally shed it. Okay? And actually shed the idea that we can't be happy and embrace the idea that we actually get to be happy, that we're allowed to, that it's not only permissible, but it's a human right. It's a personal right that we each have. So there'll be a whole video on that. Okay? Then, the hardest thing. The hardest thing we're going to have to do, we have to realize that we're made in the image of God. Okay? We all know that statement from the Bible, right? We're made in the image of God. It's such a famous statement that yogis like to, like to um, you know, Hindus, Hindu yogis, teachers, swamis, gurus, they like to use that one. You're made in the image of God. But while the connotations of that statement are so deep, which means so scary. And a, probably the biggest reason you don't have, we don't, you, me, anybody, doesn't have the love we want in our life, a working love, is because we don't understand that we're made in the, we don't realize that we're made in the image of God. And we don't realize the impact that has on us. And we don't realize the connotations of the fact that we're made in the image of God. Okay? I'll give you a hint. We're made in the image of God, and then we look at the mirror and we see a distortion. Because mirrors never show up perfectly. You know, optical quality is only so-so. Most of us are running around with optical quality that's worse than anything at the fair. You know that thing where you go into the mirror and you're really skinny and you look fat, and you're really fat and you look skinny, and you're really tall and you look short? And you get this distorted image in that mirror? I wish our mirrors were that good. I mean, we're, we're, we're using mirrors when we look at ourselves that are so shattered and pitted and marked that when we look in that mirror, it's the image we see is like, I don't want to look there. That image has nothing to offer me. But we're made in the image of God. So what do you think happens when you look at that image? When you look at that image, you expect that's what God is. That's how God's going to treat me like this image in the mirror. And that's a scary fucking image. How's my life going to work out when a guy who looks that fucking scary is in charge of it? See, this has a huge ramification or like the fact that we're made in the image of God. Because we're looking at mirrors that are so damn distorted. Okay? Alright, we a lot on that. We'll have a big course on that. Then, this is a real, the last hard thing to do. After we understand everything, we have to make a final and most important commitment to ourselves. And that is, we have to promise ourselves to never, under any circumstances, choose what is not love. Because if you want love in your life, you have to choose love, right? If you choose what's not love, what are you going to have? Not love. <laughs> but there's pulls in us, there's strings in us, there's ideas of love in us, there's feelings in us that we call love. 
that aren't love, and we want to choose them. We really, really do. You know, it's like eating food. You know, we need to eat food that nourishes our body. Then we'll have health, vitality, and happiness. But what's the first thing I grab at the buffet? It's the pie. It's the ice cream. It's the cake. You know, it's the pudding. It's the sugar. It's the oh, is that love? That hurts us, right? But that's the temptation every time, is to grab the sweet thing first, you know? And it's not even sweet, because after you eat it, you feel like shit. Life is like that too. When we have a choice to choose love, there's forces within us that are demanding that we choose something that's not love. And so we have to make a deep commitment to ourselves, an unresolvable commitment, that not under any circumstances will I choose what's not love. And if you can do that, you're pretty much home free because our pain comes from choosing what's not love. We don't have love in our life, not because it's not around us, because we're so damn busy choosing something else. Okay? So that's what we're going to cover in this course. I think this can be a really profound course for a lot of people. Um, the people I've taken the time to talk to and consult with over the last few weeks while this eclipse was bringing love choices into their lives. I just talked to them about a little part of this course, half an hour of this course that's going to be much, much longer than that. And it really, really helped them. It made a big difference in their ability to handle this eclipse. And, you know, this choice of choosing love or choosing something else, that we want to start choosing love on a regular, consistent basis in all the areas of our life, comes up all the time. It's not just coming up because it's eclipse. The people are getting hit by this eclipse. It's coming up in a major way for them right now. But this comes up for all of us all the time and all of us in major ways, sometimes and in many, many times in the future. And so we have to choose what's love, ultimately. So I hope and I really think this course will help everyone have more love in their life um, once you go through these steps, once you understand them. And I think that it's not hard to get to any destination. And the destination we're trying to get to is the destination of, wow, I have love in my life. Okay? It's not hard to get anywhere in this world. But if you don't have a map, you don't have a picture of the place, you don't have the name of the place, you don't know what vehicle will get you to that place, then it's really, really hard to get to Disneyland, right? It's not like that movie Vacation. You know, whether they decided to road trip to Disneyland and it, you know, turned to an utter disaster. But if, you know, you just know how to get to Disneyland, you jump on the right plane at the right time, you get to Disneyland, you're there in five minutes. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to get to any destination when we know what we're doing. And this course is about teaching you all how to get to where we all want to get. After that, you, can, you have a chance of getting there. You can go there now. We can't get there when we're running around in circles, chasing our own tails, chasing something that we think is love that's not. We'll never get there. We're not getting there the waves we've tried. Okay? All right, so that's what we're going to cover. I hope you all can benefit and look forward to this. So we're going to have a little homework assignment with this video. Okay? This is for your own self-grading, your, self your own contemplation. So as I talked about these different parts in this first video and I talked about the hard things, the hard things we have to do, we have to do these four hard things. Hearing those things, you might have had a reaction to them. It's important to look at the one you had the strongest reaction to. You know, you might have noticed when I was talking through them, there was one of them I had a really strong reaction to. Okay, I'm too embarrassed to tell you why. If you didn't notice it, good. I didn't have a strong reaction to any of them. Okay. <laughs> but you might have noticed. But more importantly, you might have noticed that you had a stronger reaction to one of these things. This reaction might be, oh, that's not me. Or this might reaction might be, it's just a strong emotional reaction. A painful emotional reaction of some sort. Or maybe an emotional purging of some sort. The one you had the strongest reaction to, whether it was, oh, I, kinda, I, I feel that, or, oh, that's not me. The one you had the strongest reaction to, it's probably the one you need to spend the most attention on. That's probably the one that's going to be the hardest one for you to do. It's probably the one that's your biggest roadblock. So give some time to 
think about your reactions to those four hard things, okay? And be willing to embrace healing the one that you have the hardest reaction to, okay? Um, and as we continue on those videos and talk about those in detail, um, you'll come to see how, um, you know, why you're having the reaction you're having to them and how important of a thing it is to you, okay? And always remember the things we have the strongest repulsion or attraction to, the strongest yes and the strongest no, they're always the strongest things we have to work out, okay? All right, so that's your homework assignment for this first video. Contemplate that. Start getting in touch with your biggest roadblock. Okay, thank you.